All right, so there's two main variables really on what would cause you to hit behind the ball. Certainly where your body is positioned and where your weight is, how much rotation where your weight is, is absolutely crucial. Now we did a video on that together. That's over at Scratch Golf, that's at my channel. So you might wanna hop over. It's under the same title and prime yourself with that. But on this video, we're gonna look at variable number two and it's pretty important as well. And that's what is the trail arm, the right hand for the right-handed golfer. How straight am I getting those angles? If that elbow and that wrist straighten out too soon, early release, you are probably gonna hit the ground behind the ball anyway. I want to talk to you today about live view golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do. And the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to correlate the differences between your feels and your reels. Live view is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. All right, guys, so let's talk about the two keys to avoid hitting behind the ball. Now, obviously, to my right here, Mr. Adam Bazaljet. You guys may have seen that face before at Scratch Golf Academy. I'm sure that you have. We're in beautiful Naples, Florida. Adam, thank you for having Absolutely. us back out here. Absolutely. The club at Mediterra, thanks for having us. Yes, this is, this is uh, not bad out here, guys. The weather is beautiful. Now, we're going to talk about two keys to avoid hitting behind the ball. In this video, you're going to see one mm -hmm. of those keys. And to see the second key, we're going to want you to hop over to Adam's channel, Scratch Golf Academy, so you have both of those to make sure that you stop hitting behind the ball. Let's, uh, let's dig in. Sounds good. All right, so there's two main variables really on what would cause you to hit behind the ball. Certainly where your body is positioned and where your weight is, how much rotation where your weight is, is absolutely crucial. Now we did a video on that together. That's over at Scratch Golf, that's at my channel. So you might wanna hop over. It's under the same title and prime yourself with that. But on this video, we're gonna look at variable number two and it's pretty important as well. And that's what is the trail arm the right hand for the right-handed golfer. How straight am I getting those angles? If that elbow and that wrist straighten out too soon, early release, you are probably gonna hit the ground behind the ball anyway. So let's have a look at a couple of pros who are doing it right so you get a good mental picture and we'll get back here and flesh out the drills. Okay, so one of the keys in terms of avoiding hitting behind the ball is the distance between the club and you as you're swinging the club. So we're going to look at Gary Woodland on the left here, U.S. Open champ. And as he works during his downswing, let's take a look at that trail arm, his right arm and his right wrist. Now, as he starts working down during the downswing here about halfway down, we can clearly see that trail arm is still quite a bit bent and that trail wrist is bent back. Now, the key is as he delivers that into the ball, we don't want to release both of those angles too soon. As we get down into the golf ball here, what we're going to see is by the time he gets to impact, there's still bend in both of those angles. So there's bend in the uh, trail arm here quite a bit, and there's bend in that trail wristed impact. If we're looking to not hit behind the ball, we want to feel like we exaggerate that a little past impact. We can see he pretty much straighten those out a little bit, a couple feet past impact uh, at about a 45. We've got Lee uh, Westwood on the right, another all-time great ball striker. We can see from face on, let's take a look at that trail arm and trail wrist. If we want to shorten the distance between the club head and our body, we can see obviously he's got some other pieces here, but look at the trail wrist there especially. See how that trail wrist stays bent at and past impact. A little bit exaggerated here, uh, but we can see how that stays bent. Both of those things are going to help you hit the ball uh, first and hit the ground in front of the ball instead of behind it. All right, to demonstrate the point, Try this at home if, if, you're, if you have a golf club handy. Bend your right wrist a little bit like that. I'm not suggesting that's a good takeaway. I'm saying to practice your impact, keep it bent and simply turn through. 
your club is never going to hit the ground. Obviously, you can't play golf like that, but that demonstrates the point you'll never hit the ground there if you have reasonably good body positions, if you don't straighten out the right wrist. So that would be really number one. Can you keep that wrist bent? Now, certainly, listen, even the greatest of players have gotten rid of some of that wrist angle by the time they hit the ball, but certainly not all of it. The right elbow, though, too, is pretty key as well. How much bend do you like to see in the elbow for hitting? Maybe you should jump yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think I think if I'm coming down, I think the uh, the trail elbow would have a similar effect that the trail wrist you just said. Right. Obviously, if I'm standing at my setup position and my right wrist is fully straightened, the club is down on the ground. Mm -hmm. Club's as kind of far away from me uh, as it can be. Not good for someone who hits behind right. the ball. So as I bend my right arm, or my right wrist rather, the club goes up in the air and also back behind, right? And so- right. The, now, uh, getting to the point here, my trail uh, arm is going to do basically the same thing. Right. So when I come down like this, if I just bent my arm, my club goes up, right, right. farther from the ground. So if we don't want to hit the ground, having the trail wrist and the trail arm more bent mm -hmm. would be ideal. Now, same thing as the, the trail wrist. Good players don't have the uh, arm bent forever. Right. right. And certainly if you look at them from the top of the swing, if we were to kind of say they're about a 90, that right arm angle would be wider. Sure. Might be a 120. The, the point being they have some amount of bend, right. um, but if you're someone who hits behind the ball and has struggled with hitting behind the ball, you're not someone that wants to go towards straightening the no. right arm earlier. Pretty, pretty key for you. Yeah, you would want to keep the, the trail arm maybe even exaggerated um, uh, too bent. And so when you're hitting balls, and I think we would both say the same thing on this, in reality, I'm not keeping my right arm bent forever. Right, right. right. But uh, I might want to feel like it stays bent longer than normal if I'm mm -hmm. hitting behind the ball. And probably what we really want to work to is the trail wrist and right arm being bent and getting to straight maybe at more of kind of a yeah, like 45. Exactly, exactly, 45. Now, by the way, your, when that club has all sorts of momentum and speed, it is predisposed to straighten out your right arm. So you have to use your body reasonably athletically to prevent that from happening. Just force of will with no body motion isn't gonna get it done, right? Yeah, You've got I, to use your body. I think that's such a good point too, in that if we look at it at a simple sense of, I stand here and I did that little right wrist right. deal again, and the club went up and back, well, I need to be able to get to the ball from right. there. And in slow motion, you can do things that won't work at full <laughs> speed, so that club's a little more likely to release at full speed. So. Yeah, and, and how would I get the club head from here to the ball? Well, I'd have to, I'd have, to have a pretty good pivot. Yeah, you'd I'd have, have to have, have, I'd have right. a pretty good pivot. We talked about in the, the second mm -hmm. right portion right. of this uh, video of the, the, the body segments there like that, but trail wrist more bent, uh, trail arm more bent, yeah. especially as you're um, someone who hits the ball fat, right. feeling like you hold those maybe longer than normal. Now here's a little drill I like. Now you've heard me mention, if you've seen me on some of my videos, a guy called Fred Shoemaker. I think he's a brilliant guy. You know Fred a little bit. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fred is known, he's known for a lot more than this to me, but he's known for the club throwing stuff. So what we're gonna do is use an alignment rod. And I'm gonna to suggest to you, just as Eric said, if we're trying to get everything straight, the, the club completely between my arms, both arms fully straight about there, at speed, you, we've touched on, you've got to use your body, you've got to be dynamic, but you're still trying to create speed. You're not trying to drag the club through the ball. So to me, what works better than just trying to hold angle once you've gotten the principles and you've rehearsed it, is create a significant release of energy. Just do it in the right spot. So what you do is you take an alignment rod and, and it would probably hit yeah, the ground that. 10, 12 yards in front of you. That would indicate there's energy going out away from your body. And I promise you, if you're releasing it hard there, you haven't released it too early over here. I just want to briefly, I'm sure that that was super clear and easy to understand. The point of part of that too, and you might not be able to see 20 feet ahead. If someone's hitting, let's say an inch behind, they want to feel like they throw it 10 yes. feet ahead, yep. right? Exaggerated yep. just to move that from here to a little yep. bit front. And that's, you know, one of the keys to learning in motor skills. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, just not the same mistakes all the time. So if you're hitting behind the ball, then sometimes just about up to it, you're not doing enough learning. Take some swings, toss some clubs, hit the ground, whatever. Do it a lot. Even if you miss hit shots or you're just doing practice swings. And once you've felt a lot, you'll be able to dial it into something that's pretty neutral for you. Awesome. 
All right, guys, so this was one of two keys that we have to stop hitting fat shots. Now, if you want to see me go over the other portion and maybe the part that we would say you should almost even do before yeah, this. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, go ahead and hop over to Scratch Golf Academy. You can see me doing that drill. We'll include a link down below. Guys, as always, I'm sure hopefully you like this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Please like the video, click the notification bell, and subscribe. Adam, thanks again for having us out. Pleasure. Right? Appreciate it. Pleasure.